In this video, we are gonna look at the similarities and differences between atoms, ions, and isotopes. So before we talk about what those terms mean, we need to talk about our subatomic particles. So if we think about the word subatomic, sub meaning smaller or below, we're thinking about the particles that make up our atoms, and we have three subatomic particles. We have protons. We have neutrons. And we have electrons. Okay, so our protons have a positive charge. And we know from our models of the atom that our protons live in the nucleus. Our protons are also responsible for determining what type of element it is. And we will get to that in a minute. Okay, our other, our second subatomic particle is our neutrons. And our neutrons are neutral, so they have a zero charge. Our neutrons also live in our nucleus with our protons. And our neutrons are responsible for determining the isotope. Again, we'll get back to that here in a minute. And then finally, our third subatomic particle are our electrons. And electrons have a negative charge. Now the electrons, their location has changed over the course of the atomic models, but if we go based on Bohr's atomic model, they live in energy levels. And different energy levels can contain different amounts of electrons. So our first energy level can contain two, our second energy level can contain eight, our third energy level has 18, and our last energy level has 32, I believe. Um, and then our electrons are responsible to, for determining our type of charge, or our t whether or not it is an ion or the charge of the atom. Now, where do we get all of this information? We can get a lot of it from our periodic table. So here's an example square off the periodic table. The big whole number is our atomic number. And that tells us our number of protons. So this example is hydrogen. Hydrogen has one proton. Our symbol in the middle is the symbol for our element. an element symbol can be one capital letter or it's going to be one capital and one lowercase letter. It will never be two capitals and it will never be more than two letters. So it's either going to be a single uppercase or an uppercase and a lowercase. So it's really important when you're writing element symbols that you make sure you're writing them correctly. And then our last number at the bottom is our average atomic mass. And that number is normally going to be a decimal. So there's gonna be two numbers in the box. There's gonna be the whole number, and there's gonna be the number that's the decimal. The decimal number is the average atomic mass. The whole number at the top is our atomic number, which tells us our number of protons. So let's look at how all of these things work together. So all atoms contain protons, neutrons, and electrons. And our type of atom is determined by our number of protons. So for example, any atom that's gonna have two protons is gonna be a helium atom. If you have four protons, it's going to be a beryllium atom. Okay, so your number of protons determines what type of atom it is or what element. Now when we're looking at atoms itself, um, they have a neutral charge. This means that the number of electrons equals our number 
number of protons. So our number of positives equals our number of negatives. So if we're looking for two of the same type of atom, we're gonna be looking for two things that have the same number of protons. And if it's an atom, unless it's stated otherwise, we can assume that it has a neutral charge. So our protons and our electrons are going to be equal. Now, if we look at ions, ions are just a slight variation from an atom. An ion means it has either a positive or a negative charge. And this positive, oops, positive or negative charge. And this positive or negative charge is formed by gaining or losing electrons. So if we're losing electrons, we're gonna form a positive charge. If we're gaining electrons, we're gonna form a negative charge. So an ion is the same element, it's just going to have a charge. So for example, we can have neutral hydrogen, which is gonna have one proton and one electron, or we can have a hydrogen ion with a positive one charge, which is going to have one proton and no electrons. So the protons stay the same, we're just gaining or losing electrons. And then our isotopes are a little bit more complicated, they're harder to define, an isotope is the same element but with different masses. And this comes from different numbers So in our nucleus of our atoms, we have protons and neutrons. Our protons tell us what element it is or what type of atom it is. Our neutrons are gonna tell us its total mass. So the mass of an element is equal to the protons plus the neutrons. So we have our number of protons plus our number of neutrons. So if you're changing the number of neutrons, you're gonna change your mass but you're, you're not changing your protons, you're going to have the same element. So for example, we can have hydrogen with a mass of one, we can have hydrogen with a mass of two, hydrogen with a mass of three, those are the most common ones, and those are called isotopes of hydrogen. So if you have the same element but different masses, you're gonna have isotopes. So these are really important vocab terms that you're going to want to be able to keep straight. So an atom is a neutral, um, particle, so the same number of electrons as protons, and protons are going to tell us the type, so what element it is. Our ions are going to have either a positive or a negative charge, and those are formed by gaining or losing electrons, not changing the number of protons. And isotopes is the same element but different masses, so it's different numbers of neutrons. So with ions, we're changing electrons. With isotopes, we're changing neutrons. If you change the protons, you're going to change what type of element. 